Hi, today I'm going to cover Section 3, Retail. How to retail with the catalogues, building a strong customer base. And here we have them, our first ever brand new Viva MK catalogue with 80 consumable products that our customers are just crying out to get. On the front there, you see the most popular, the Wipeout Stain Remover, along with many more of the old favourites, including new ranges, for example, the Pet Care range. This is an interim catalogue until the MLM and the Christmas range is launched in August. If you've got a customer base that's telling you to get out to your customers, tell them a bit about the history, uh, and get them these products that they're dying to purchase. And if you're brand new, it gives you an opportunity to start building towards a really strong customer base ready for the Christmas catalog launching with the MLM in August. And when you register, you're going to get 50 free catalogs with your kit. Now, in our experience, it's better to place these books with people that you know, into the hands of people you know. To post 50 catalogues through a letterbox, it won't give you the desired result. So, or you can place them in your local area and collect the next day. But I will cover that later on under post or place. But when you place your first order with VVMK, you receive a further 150 free books. So it's really important that you make the most of those 50 free books in order to get those other 150 as soon as possible. So write a list of everyone you can think of that you'd like to give a book to. Friends, family, work colleagues, people for nursery, school, neighbours, People that you have regular access to, though, uh, as you only want to be leaving them for one or two days. If they're further afield, you can send them the products online. You want to get the books back quickly to allow you to give them to others on your list. And I like to use what's called the Franks list. F for friends, R for relatives, A for acquaintances, N for neighbours, K for kids. The S is for your significant other or your spouse's friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbours or kids if they have them. Door to door. It usually takes around about two days for your catalogues to arrive. In the meantime, you can get prepared for your catalogues going straight out there. You can also get your online shop up and running so you can get the online catalogue to people there. Your sponsor will send you all you need for retailing templates, but they can also be found on the Viva MK support site. Save these to a folder in your documents and you want to print off three weekly planners. Your sponsor's going to help you plan those first two or three weeks in the business around your commitments, around how many books you're working with and what you want to earn. And all the documents are in Microsoft Word, so you just insert your own details. If you don't have Microsoft, I'm sure your sponsor will insert them for you. And here's the templates. Weekly planner, callback slips. Now that's the slip that we put in the catalog to let the customer know who we are, when we're calling back, our telephone number, our Facebook online shop, uh, any other information, might have a little income opportunity slip attached to it. At first, you may put an additional slip in there to explain a little bit about the history and what's happened. Sorry I missed you. Thank you for your order. Sorry I haven't managed to get you. Please call or track and track your retail. Here's an example of our weekly planner. You can see along the top there, one, your own commitments, two, meetings and trainings, three, retail plan, and four, activity plan. Now, it depends on whether you want to just retail or you want to grow a business, but first you enter your own commitments. If you want to grow a business, the next thing to put in your planner would be the meetings and the trainings. But in the early stages, even if you only want to retail, I would recommend you pop in 
the dates. Most of them are online at nine o'clock. Now you enter your chosen retail plan. And once you've decided what you want to earn, your sponsor will help you with this, uh, just to make sure that you achieve that goal that you're aiming for. The amount of time you commit to your Viva MK business will be dependent on what you want to achieve from it and your personal circumstances. How last, your books have arrived. We're now going to pre prepare them. It's important that you make every pack the same so that you can recognise, one, your catalogue, and two, uh, you can see if the customers looked at it or not. Name and address, label, or at least your name and number on, uh, I don't put my address, name and uh, telephone number on the books and the order forms. Print off your callback slips or photocopy them if your sponsors posted them to you. At the main book you want to have at the front with the callback slip at the front. And at the back you have your flyer for the Christmas launch in August and your order form clearly visible. And a little tip, I use a highlighter pen to highlight the telephone number and the email address because if I've got the customer details, it makes it much easier to organize delivery. Place or post. What is posting? Well, just like a postman, you select 200 houses, you're going to go to them twice a week, so it's 400 houses, and you just pop them through the letterbox as if you were a postman and take a record. What is placing? Simply knocking on the door and handing them the catalog. If you're delivering your catalogs in a rural area, where the houses are more isolated, or working with 50 or less, then we suggest that you place. But how do you feel about knocking on doors? Some people, it terrifies them. But all you really want to say is, hi, I'm delivering the Viva MK catalogs and I'm collecting them on, for example, Thursday. Please just leave it on your doorstep to save me disturbing you when I collect it. And most people, I will say, do choose to post. Plan your route. Get a map and break it into five or six areas. I know some people work six, I work on five, and you want to start close to home. That's for economy and time. Don't jump from street to street, no matter what happens, stick to your planner. And deliver to every house, ignore no salesman stickers. Uh, they don't really apply to us. I would say 75% of my customers do have no salesman stickers on their door. Most of them inherited them. So unless it says no catalogs, I ignore it completely. Watch out for empty houses. There are signs. And ignore other distributors, other companies. The most important part is to make a plan and to stick to it. And most important, keep good records. So, Prepare your catalogues, if possible, the day before you're going to deliver them, especially if you're working with 200. Then that takes time and it makes sure that the plan is executed. 50 doesn't take so long to prepare. Know where you're going with the catalogues. Don't change your mind and have a street map uh, or go to streetmaps.com and make sure you've got that route, route planned properly. And here's an example retail plan for posting. Working with 200 books posted twice a week. We leave the catalogues for a maximum of two days. A popular retail plan is to deliver on a Friday, collect on a Monday, then deliver back out on a Tuesday to collect on a Thursday. And as you can see in red there, you're going to have callbacks. We recommend to call back no more than a further two times after your first visit. So make sure that it's as quickly as possible and put the day and not tomorrow on your slip. But I'll recap on that in a moment. If you're placing them, let's say you've only got the 50 books and you don't have a big list of people to give them a, you're only going to leave the catalogue for one day. And here's an example. Books out Monday, books in and callbacks Tuesday, books back out, books in with and, and in call bags, books out. You get the idea.
And this is just half a day planner. It only takes a couple of hours. Keep good records. Notebook with the date and the street name along the top. The date the books were dropped is really important. House number down the left hand margin. And just make a note against each house when you collect the catalog. For example, looked, not looked, order, no thanks, and lost. I simply put a cross for looked, a tick for not looked, sorry, a tick for looked, wrong way around there, a tick for looked, a cross for not looked, an O for order, N for no thanks, we line through, and L for lost, we line through it. Know how many catalogues you delivered and know how many catalogues you collected and what sales were achieved. And you'll see that on track your detail. It's important to know your numbers. And there's a little customer record sheet example. Street name along the top, house numbers down the left, date that you visited, one, two, three, and so on, with the customer's name and telephone number. Track your retail. The day, the amount, catalogs out, catalogs in, total sales, average per catalog, and that's per catalog collected. And your weekly sales and your four weekly sales, and this will give you an average per book collected. Don't think it's quicker at the time not to record the information. It's going to be very time consuming for the future if you don't, and it will take you longer to get to a customer base. Now, some of the catalogs will be on the doorstep for collection. Those that aren't, just knock on the door and say, hi, I'm collecting the Viva MK catalog. If they're not in, just post a, sorry I missed you slip with the day that you're going to be returning to pick it up. We recommend the next day and don't put tomorrow. From 150 catalogues delivered, you should expect to collect around 100 the first attempt. But it does vary from street to street, but more importantly, the time of day. If you go through the day, you may get less than that. However, on your sorry I missed you slip, I have printed on that, please leave catalog on doorstep for collection. If you do that, you'll find that the next day you'll get the biggest majority of them back and you really will only be going back on your third visit for some stragglers. Record your numbers and results on the retail tracker. Here's some tips though. Always check the book to see if there's an order before you leave the door. Sometimes the customer puts their name in but doesn't fill out the address. They assume that you know it since you're collecting the book. If you can't find the order form easily, all I do is just take a little note next to the house number. Uh, I put N, F, no forum. <laughs> you can put your own one. And that way, if you do find an order without an address, you can easily tally it up with the customer. If you do have an order, post thank you for your order, letting them know when your delivery day is. And the turn for those callbacks as soon as possible, people are less likely to forget. And as I've said, you may have to return three times while you're building a customer base for some of your catalogs. A final, sorry I haven't managed to get you, please call, should be used on your last visit. Now that will result in telephone orders. People, oops, Daisy, I better phone in my order. So what to expect from a blanket drop? Orders. <laughs> now these uh, statistics are based on our previous industry. As the new catalogs don't arrive till Wednesday, we don't know exactly what we're going to get from blanket drops with many customer stories uh, and the customer base was achieving sales of up to £10 per book. But with the catalogs, Blanket drop-in, what I'm going to base it around is what we experienced in our last industry. It may be for the next six weeks where we're waiting on the Christmas catalogue, slightly less than that. But you're still building up a good foundation and getting some customers for when that catalogue is launched at Christmas. So, if you're putting them through letterboxes, 
an average of one in 10 people buy, and the average order would be 10 pounds, uh, which would equal a pound in orders for each catalogue collected. Catalogues that you actually placed into hands generate two pounds per book collected. But bear in mind, in order to place one book, you've probably knocked on three doors. So it works out the same per house, if that makes sense. The sales per book is going to slowly increase though, as you start to cross people off. They don't want the book or they lose it. They don't look at it. And eventually people who look, but they don't buy, or they don't look, ever look. We're going to work on a five or a six week cycle. The catalogues are posted or handed to different people for five or six weeks and then we return to where we started. So week one, week two, week three, week four, straight back to week one. So that's why it's important to keep those records, especially the dates. On your second visit, you'll miss out the people who told you they didn't want a book or already receive a catalog from another distributor, or if you were unable to collect your catalog on your last visit. In other words, they lost it. And this is the start of a customer base. On the third visit though, you're going to, this is going to make the most difference, you're going to miss out the people who've not looked at the book. This is going to be around half of them, so you're getting closer to your customer base and should receive around 150, maybe even two pounds a book. The fourth visit, some people give them longer, but on the fourth visit for me, uh, once I've visited everybody three times over 15 weeks, I'm ready to cut out the people who don't look, or even the people who look but don't buy from the catalogue. I will be doing blanket drops periodically throughout the year to collect new customers. So instead of visiting 100 houses and collecting 100 pounds of orders, you'll deliver to 100 houses and collect approximately 300 pounds in orders. So that's less time, more orders. And what you'll find is you'll be able to fit all your customers in around to maybe three weeks. So that gives you week four and week five free of your cycle to collate more customers and start another blanket job in an area close by to where you're working and you want them to really be close together and then just continue in the same format as when you first started uh, until you remove the non-buyers and the non-lookers and get to customers. And you can do that as much as you like. There is no limit to how many customers you can build. So what to expect when you're going only to customers? You should be receiving with a new customer base an average of three pounds a book. And you'll get most of your books back on your first pickup. You shouldn't lose any. You'll notice that some people though will only have bought once and never buy again. I think they buy from all the new distributors. You want to read them out if you want to get a fruitful customer base. Some customers will let you down, they'll lose the books, can't afford it, never in, return the products consistently. I would recommend that you score those customers off and maybe once a year um, go to them at Christmas but do the occasional blanket drop to replace them. And then eventually you'll have what's called a mature customer base. The Good, with good customer service, reliability, and building that relationship, you can start to expect to achieve between five to 10 pounds a book. Work with your planner, don't change it for minor things, only major, and you must be consistent and regular to build a good customer base. When collecting your catalogs, you're going to need a record book. I would also take pencils, they work better in the rain. Sorry I missed you. Thank you for your order. A towel if it's raining, and that's not for you, that's to dry your catalogues, and a nice big bright smile. Things that's going to happen, expect good pickups, bad pickups, medium pickups, low pickup, rubbish pickups. It will balance out, that's why we keep the records. Over the month, focus on picking up 20 customers a week. 
Stragglers, lost catalogues, they're all part of the business when building towards a good customer base. You cannot build a business without experiencing all of these. And you will come across other distributors' catalogues. Please carry on delivering your catalogues regardless and just follow the system. People that buy on different days, customers buy on different days, there are no territories. And most established distributors only service between three to four hundred customers per month. Therefore, the majority of houses in any town will not be receiving a catalogue at all or on a regular basis. Finally, what makes retailing tick? Consistency. Make a plan and stick to it. Regularity. Maintain a frequency. Your customers will expect you. Reliability, be there without fail when you say. Personalise, get your name in front of the customers at every available opportunity. And refund or replace um, without question, even if the customers wish to return goods supplied by another distributor. There will be a way of doing that that won't affect you, but just help them to return these products if necessary. Above all, build a customer base. This means keeping records from day one and getting to know your customers by name and building a relationship with them. And don't forget to add your catalogue customers to your online Facebook shop. There's going to be some exciting products coming up um, in July for online customers and we don't want our catalogue customers to miss out on these. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please contact the person that sent you along to watch this video. And the next video to watch, if you haven't already done so, is how to set up your online Facebook shop. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.